Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Johnny Chivers, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the difference between AWS Aurora and AWS RDS for MySQL. During this video, we'll cover the architecture for AWS RDS, we'll then cover the architecture for AWS Aurora, and then we'll look at the differences between the two. And finally, we'll sum up why you may or may not want to use one over the other. Just one more thing before we go into it. From now on, I'll call AWS RDS MySQL RDS, and I'll call AWS Aurora MySQL AWS Aurora. It just makes it easier for me to separate the two as we go through the video and easier for you to follow along. So in terms of the infrastructure for RDS, it's a bit more of a traditional database pattern. We have a server, it has the compute on that server and the database engine installed. We then attach storage to that server and when we read or write data, it comes up and down from that storage. We can also attach several replication instances in different AZs, giving us multi-availability zone failover and the data is replicated synchronously through the logs. Of course, when I say a traditional database, it's anything but because AWS actually spin this up for us and we have to supply a few key values. But in terms of the actual architecture, it's pretty much the same as a traditional database. We're just abstracted away from it. Compare this to AWS Aurora. It operates differently. We have compute nodes that sit by themselves with the database engine installed. And then we have storage nodes that sit below the data. These compute nodes can be read and write and they can sit in different AZs, but fundamentally the important part here is that the data is separate and this operates in a clustered way. When we need to actually replicate the data, we physically replicate the underlying storage nodes. We're no longer replicating through the logs. So that's the change. Instead of a more traditional looking database server, we actually have the compute on one server and the storage on their own nodes by themselves. But what advantages does this then give us? Why did AWS implement Aurora this way? The first thing is the use of the data nodes. The data nodes in Aurora are what we replicate when we need more storage, so we just add more nodes. If we compare this to RDS, it operates differently. We have to attach EBS volumes, they become part of the data engine, then we replicate data to it or add more data. So that process is just slower than adding storage nodes. Also, because we're on storage nodes rather than the EBS block when it comes to Aurora, crash recovery is quicker. We actually, if we crash, we're just crashing the compute node and then we just go to the data nodes and everything's back to where it needs to be. RDS works differently. It works from a checkpointing system on crash recovery. So we may actually have to add data from the checkpoint and this whole operation is slower. And then again, because of the architecture, when it comes to recovery, failover onto a new node is actually slower in RDS than it is using Aurora. In RDS, it's 120 seconds, but in AWS Aurora, if we have to fail over to one of our emergency writer nodes, it's actually only 30 seconds, which means we actually get failover quicker and therefore we have higher availability in a quicker time. The next fundamental difference is actually price. And I'll put an example on the screen. And this surprises people to know that Aurora is actually 40% cheaper than the RDS version. There's probably a couple of reasons for this and one's the architecture, but there's also definitely a drive from AWS to push us towards that service. So they are, in my opinion, offering it cheaper to get us there. And regardless, if you're a small bootstrapped startup or a massive enterprise, 40% is a lot of money. It actually could be savings made and then costs spent elsewhere. So if AWS Aurora is faster, cheaper, and scales better, why aren't people using it? So for me, in real life experience, it boils down to three things when I talk to people on a daily basis about the shift. The first one is minor version releases. AWS Aurora does not have every minor version release of MySQL. It does have every major version release, and I'll put that on screen right now. However, depending on your current architecture and what minor release version you're on, it can be a bit of a task to migrate onto a newer major version release. Therefore, some companies and people I talk to on a daily basis would rather start new projects on Aurora than migrate existing projects over, and that buy-in just takes a little longer. The second reason AWS Aurora adoption can be slow in some instances is that there's no automatic failover in terms of regions out of the box. 
So AWS RDS has a feature where you can actually have another RDS system or database on in a separate region. And if the whole region goes down, you can switch over into that other region where all your data is. So for example, if North Virginia went down and that would be absolute chaos, then you could have a separate region that's always on like Ireland and then switch all your customers over to there. And that comes out of the box with RDS. However, with AWS Aurora, that is not the case. There is no feature that lets you have another instance or cluster always on in a separate region. There are workarounds to this, like storing data the S3 and backing it up into another cluster, but that functionality is not managed by AWS. You have to implement your own solution. Now, some companies' DR policies are only multi-AZ, i.e. they have to be in different data centers, and that means that Aurora is fine. But if you have a DR recovery policy, that means you have to be in two separate regions, there's a little bit more work for you to get that set up. And finally, strangely, the biggest reason is actually the change in infrastructure architecture. This isn't something that I ever expected to encounter, but because organizations have been using infrastructure that looks a certain way, in the case of RDS, this is where you have a server, you attach storage in, and the engine sits on the server. Whether you're on-premise or in the cloud, it all looks very much the same. And when you move to AWS Aurora, this changes. You have to get buy-in from your DBA team, you have to get buy-in from your developers, and you have to get buy-in from senior leadership that this is the way to go. And that just takes time. However, once you can get people comfortable with the infrastructure, the cost savings usually push them towards that environment. With that all being said, guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on AWS Aurora and where you see the future of databases in AWS. I've been Johnny Chivers. I'll make all this information free on my website with all my other AWS learning resources, link in the description. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.